Hi, my name is Jeremy Walker from the Android team, and I'm going to walk you through identifying background location code in a project, seeing if it's really needed, and finally, reviewing several alternatives you can use. First, why would you want to do this? Well, Android 10 and 11 gives users better privacy control through fine-grained location permissions. One of the biggest changes is the separation of foreground location access, also known as while in use access, from background location access, also known as all the time access. Most of the use cases can and should, according to our latest policies, only use foreground location access. For instance, sharing your current location with friends and turn-by-turn -turn navigation are use cases that should only use foreground location access. You can read more in our preview link. And specifically in Android 11, you can see this is our docs here. Android 10 as well has some good information. Um, but specifically back to Android 11, uh, you actually can't request uh, both permissions at the same time. So again, wherever possible, you should only rely on foreground access for your location data. Okay, how do I identify background location usage? I'm going to use my background location sample from GitHub. Actually, before we jump into this project, we should cover the steps you need to follow. They're pretty simple. First, find any location APIs in your code to determine if they are used in the background. Um, our developer documentation calls this out pretty well. We actually have a, a guide here that uh, walks you through this. I mean, what you're basically going to be doing is looking for uh, the Fuse Location Provider APIs, uh, geo, which is the recommended solution, by the way, uh, geofencing APIs, or even the la lo uh, Location Manager API, which is the platform API. Most developers won't need that API. Instead, they'll use the Fuse Location Provider. Um, the next step is to determine if the code is executed in the background, which is dependent on the app's architecture. It's usually a combination of using lo location co code while the app's UI isn't visible, along with one of the APIs like the background service, job intent, work manager, there's a bunch of them, or even pending intents if you're, if you're subscribing to updates. Okay, now let's walk through, let's walk through the code. Um, so I'm gonna pretend like this is an app. This app, uh, again, is from the GitHub samples. It's location updates background Kotlin, which is kind of a mouthful, but it shows best practices for getting location in the background. But I'm gonna pretend like I'm looking for location code and I wanna remove it really quickly. So the first thing obviously um, is I'm, without even diving into the architecture, I can just do a double shift and search for I'm using Fuse Location Provider, so I'll just start searching for that so I can see right away. Um, I have the Fuse Location Client. That's the main code for doing this. So you can see I can start looking through and start seeing, okay, well, looks like I'm subscribing to location updates here. There's a start and a stop. Usually the most important one you're looking for is a stop, right? When does it stop? So in this case, I'm gonna go look at the usage of this. Uh, I know I have this class is uh, my location manager, so it's being used somewhere. Um, if I do command B, that's control B in, in other um, OSs outside of Mac. But if I do a control B, it's gonna show usages. I can see I'm using a location repository. And again, if, if I just do the uh, location, if I just look for this method and how it's used, um, I can see it's, oh, okay, this is better. It's in a view model. So I know it's being used with either an activity or a fragment somewhere. So again, I can do the, uh, the command B to find usage. So it's being used twice in this fragment. Okay, there's the UI code I was looking for. Um, and if I just glance at this, I can see, okay, there's this is some sort of button state. It's being triggered um, and it's either, it's either subscribing to, it's either starting location updates or it's stopping them. So the user is stopping them with a button. Um, but if I look for this again here, um, I can see it's used somewhere else. Oh, and on pause. So that's pretty much what gives me the clue, like is this in the foreground or not? Um, you can see I actually call stop location updates on pause. So normally that would mean, okay, I'm only using in the foreground, which is perfect. But if we look at this if statement, you can see I'm seeing, hey, if I have access background location permissions, then, um, then I don't wanna stop this. So in that case, and I'd say, okay, th this is actually triggering in the background um, separate from all the permission stuff. So this is something I may wanna change. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Like you're just searching and finding your code and kind of figuring it out. The next part is more about how your app uses location. Specifically, is background location needed? Uh, you should evaluate whether background location access is critical to the core functionality of your app. 
As mentioned earlier, most use cases can be realized with only foreground location. We actually have a page uh, that covers that. If you remember this um, access location in the background, which I covered earlier, there's a whole other part about evaluating whether you really need it. Um, but basically, if you don't need location access in the background, either migrate to foreground location access or remove it altogether. It will simplify your app uh, and code in both cases. Just remember for like Android 10 and above and 11, this little, you have to remove this permission from the mass uh, manifest access background location. So that would be um, right here. You'd want to make sure you remove that from Android 10, 11 above. That said, if background location is still critical, make sure you follow best practice and review our policies on location. Okay, let's say you do want to migrate to foreground location access. That is, you've determined you don't need um, access location in the background. The first option is um, only retrieving location while your activity is viewable, and it's probably the most common approach. Uh, in this case, it would just mean you don't request any location data, like get last location when your app isn't visible. Uh, for this sample, uh, what it would mean is in the fragment on the on pause, um, I would stop location updates. In other words, I'd, I'd remove this line so that I know so that I, I knew every time that the, the UI went out of view that it would stop listening to location updates. And if we click through to what that actually does, um, you can see it's just using the Fuse Location Client and just removing location updates. Okay, that's pretty straightforward and can cover a lot of use cases, but there's another option for foreground location. Your app can also retrieve location via a foreground service without the background location permission. This is a little more difficult. Let's look at the code lab to see how we design this. So if you just search for Google Code Labs, this should be the first thing that comes up. And if you put in location, you want to choose the receive location updates in Android with Kotlin. So this code lab actually walks you through understanding and writing the location code. Uh, it also touches on permissions and it, it helps you support Android 10 and 11. So I'm not going to walk through all that. I'm going to focus on the design because this Code Lab actually only uses foreground location, which is pretty nice. Um, so I have the app open here, uh, but I want to show you the, the actual app first before we dive into understanding the design. So if I actually start navigating here, oops. Um, yeah, you'll see that we have the app open. If I hit start receiving location updates, I'll get uh, while using the app, pretty straightforward. I click on that and, oh, sorry. Yeah, so I'm getting location updates now. Uh, and if I navigate away from that, you'll see I get a notification that comes up. And that gets gives us um, continual updates as they come in. Um, and if I scroll down, you can see the location. I can launch the activity or I can hit stop receiving updates. Um, so you're probably like, oh yeah, that's just like a navigation app. And that's pretty much it is what it is. But again, it's only using a uh, foreground location, which is uh, pretty nice. So we do have a service that's retrieving location in the app. And I'm going to talk through that in detail. But basically when the app is paused, the trick is transitioning that service to a foreground service and tying it to a notification. Um, that way your app is still in use and you can continue to get location updates without background uh, location access. So um, well, before I open this up, it's important to point out you shouldn't just replace all code retrieving location in the background with this approach. First, uh, determine if you should really be retrieving location data in that instance. In most cases, you should be requesting location data uh, in the foreground only if the user initiated an action that requires location like navigating to another place. Again, review our policy documents for uh, more details. How is this done? Well, in the complete module, again, this is the complete part of the app. It, this is a code lab, so you're obviously going to have a base module where you build everything up. But in the complete module where everything's done, uh, you have three main classes. You have the main activity, which is going to be your UI stuff. You have a service. Um, in this case, it's doing all the location stuff, and it's going to handle the heavy lifting for transitioning uh, to a foreground service and back. And then you have a utils class, which I'm not going to cover, but has some extension functions. 
and provide some other stuff. Uh, but anyway, let's look at the main activity. I'm not going to cover all the code again, but I'm going to cover the main parts for the design. The main thing here is that I have an instance of the service here. Um, I do have a broadcast receiver you can see here. The reason I have that is um, in the service, I was simplifying things. So whenever I actually get a location update, I just use a broadcast to send out the information. Uh, if you wanted to make this a little more, you know, add a database and all that good stuff, you'd use like live data and room and all that stuff. But again, I was trying to simplify it. So that's why I have that broadcast receiver. Um, I have a service connection. And this is uh, for so I can bind to the class. So you can see here in on start, um, I'm binding to the class. And then in on stop, I'm unbinding. And binding to the service just let, it lets me call methods in the service directly. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, I only have one click listener for one button. Uh, but you can see right here, it either unsubscribes to location updates or subscribes to location updates. Pretty straightforward. That's really it. Um, so the summary of the class is um, it's just binding to a service which handles all the location code. It knows nothing about it. Uh, and this lets us cleanly separate the location code from the activity in the UI. The other nice feature is when we want to support location updates in a foreground service, we can easily do that. How? Well, let's look at the foreground only location service to figure that out. So. There's some quite a bit of code here. Um, you have the uh, location code, which I walked through in the code lab. You can see it on create is actually where I initialize all that. There's a start command, there's some other stuff. You can see I have the subscribe to location updates. That's where all the location code is to get it started. And then you have unsubscribe to location updates. Uh, the most important thing is, A, I give them a method to call to subscribe to location updates. But the cool thing is, is because all this location code is separated, um, I know that when they call that when they unbind for me that the activity is going away. It's no longer going to be view visible. So if they're actively subscribed to location changes, and I get this unbind request, then I know that I need to transition this service to a foreground service. So in that case, I create a notification, and then I then I basically uh, transition it to a foreground service. And then if the activity comes back and rebinds to me. Well, that's great. Then I basically stop it as a foreground service and remove the notification. Again, I do that with on bind as well. But that's kind of the magic. So um, there's a little more to it. Well, no, there really isn't any more to it. That's the basic thing. If you want to dig into the location code, then there obviously is more to it. But you're, what you're basically doing is you're using a service to retrieve the location for the activity via binding. And we promote that service to a foreground service with a notification when the activity is no longer visible. We still get location changes, even the app isn't technically visible. It is with the notification, but you don't have an activity visible um, and you don't need background permissions. Uh, one other final note. Uh, so in the manifest, you do have to say all your foreground service. Uh, you, if you have a foreground service, you have to say what type it is, in this case, location. So. This is a requirement for 10 and above, so it's a common mistake that you want to avoid. So make sure you review your manifest for all foreground services using location and add that. Anyway, I hope you found the screencast useful. If you want to learn more about managing location in Android 10 and 11, please visit this training page. Thank you. Mm -hmm.